Oops. When I started this podcast, my intention was that anybody who was building a home gym could actually start at episode one, go through the first bunch of episodes and build their home gym a step at a time. And I decided to start with five episodes on how to buy a rack. And then after the last episode, if you watch that, which is the steps that you would need to take to build a gym, racks are last. So we're going to get back in line. We're going to get back in order. And we are going to start with one of the earlier steps like I should have to start with today on the Gym Crafter Podcast. Welcome back to the Gym Crafter Podcast. My name is Tim. I am the head gym nerd here at gymcrafter.com, the website that I built to help ordinary folks build home and garage gyms that they absolutely love. And I have got a fun episode for you guys today. Like I said, we're going back to the beginning. We're going back to the, one of the first steps that I mentioned in the last episode. But uh, before we get to that, make sure you hit like on the episode. Make sure that you're subscribed. I've got all kinds of episodes coming up. I've got a bunch already recorded and ready to go, so you're not gonna wanna miss those. Make sure you're subscribed. Bring that bell so you know when they come out. And uh, leave a comment, let me know what you think. But let's get into today's episode. And as usual, we're gonna start with an update. And today the update's gonna be a little bit different. Normally I do either like a gym equipment update or a training update, and I'm not gonna do either one. I'm just gonna kinda, kind of a sneak preview the next episode is I've been doing a lot of different stuff in my training and diet and things like that. I've been getting some questions about it. So next episode, we're going to take a deep dive into the situation that I'm currently finding myself in health-wise, how I got here, what happened to Jim Crafter for the two years that I wasn't making videos and all that kind of fun stuff. It will not be an equipment episode. So for those of you guys who tune in for equipment, you can probably skip next week. But that's my update is I'm going to update you next time. But for now, let's get into equipment because that's what you all tuned in for, right? And today we are talking about benches. Like I said, when I made that last episode, we talked about starting with just a basic implement that you can use for a long period of time along with some programming that gets you results while you save up for the things for your gym. And the very next step was to buy a set of adjustable dumbbells and a weight bench. So we're going to talk today about weight benches. Uh, a couple episodes from now, we're going to talk about adjustable dumbbells. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna talk about weight benches today. What to look for in a weight bench, what I recommend people look for, what I look for when I go buy a weight bench. And hopefully after the end of this episode, if you are in the market for a bench or you're in the market to upgrade a bench that you already have, you will have everything that you need to go out and buy an awesome bench that is going to last you until you decide to buy another one. Not because it wears out, not because the padding rips, but because you decide to buy another one. And I wanna start by addressing something that a lot of people always say, which I think is a great idea, which is one of the best ways to save money is to by used. However, I do want to tell you kind of a funny story early on. Uh, I did that a bunch because I bought a bunch of stuff off of Facebook Marketplace. I bought a bunch of stuff off of Craigslist for a minute. You name it, I bought it there. And one of the early things that I bought was I bought a rogue weight bench off of Facebook Marketplace. I had been looking at weight benches. I couldn't afford the rogue that I wanted. Um, as I mentioned in a recent episode, my original dream for my gym was that everything in here would be rogue. So when I saw a great deal on a rogue weight bench, it looked like it was in great shape in the pictures. So I went out and I bought, I think I spent like 100 or 125 bucks on it. And as you know, that's a steal for a rogue weight bench. Uh, didn't look it over too well. It looked like it was in good condition. The padding looked like it was in good condition. The, the stitching was good. I brought it into the garage. Uh, it was kind of late at night. I went to work the next day. And when I came home and opened my garage door, oh my goodness, the smell was unbearable. Now, a lot of people, when they buy gym gear and stuff like that, they ask if you smoke because cigarette smoke gets and stuff. This was not cigarette smoke. This was body odor. Whoever had used this bench had not cleaned it or wiped it down until they decided to sell it to me. And the stench of this person who had it was baked into this bench so bad that no amount of cleaning, no amount of wiping down, no amount of anything was gonna fit. The only thing that I could think of was I, was, I contacted Rogue about just buying a, a new set of pads and if you've ever called Rogue to buy stuff like that, you know that the amount of money I was gonna have to spend on that was more than I could just go and buy a different bench for. And that's how I ended up with my original body salad bench I mentioned last episode. But um, yeah, just a caution when you're buying uh, fitness gear that has pads on it. Uh, one of the things you're going to check is for the smell. Also make sure you check for like mold and mildew and stuff like that because water damage can be pretty bad. You can usually tell that by the smell. But uh, I bought a 120 some odd dollar Rogue weight bench that went directly in the garbage. So that was fun. Lesson learned. Uh, maybe I should have included that in the last episode about lessons that I learned that cost me money, but lesson learned on the rogue weight bench that was really, really 
Man, that was bad. I can't even impress upon you guys. Someday, when I was a kid, they were going to have smell-o-vision. And boy, if we had that right now, you would not be happy with your smell-o-vision set. But anyway, let's move on to more productive advice other than don't buy a stinky bench. And the first thing I want to address is another way to save money is I think that a flat bench is one of the most underrated pieces of gym equipment out there. And I, I know that, you know, typically, look, if budget's not an issue and Go back to that episode where I talked about doing things step by step and saving up money. If you do it that way, budget won't be an issue. But just in case you're trying to spend you know, less money somehow and used isn't in the cards, a really great way to spend less money on a bench is to buy a flat bench instead of an adjustable bench. You can actually get some angles out of a flat bench by putting bumper plates under the end. I put as many as three 45 pound plates under either end of my bench and you can get a little bit of an angle. Now you're not gonna get 45 degrees, but you can get a decent angle out of your bench, uh, both incline and decline. So a flat bench is a great way to save money. It's a great way to kind of go simpler and more basic at first. And it's really, like I said, it's an underrated gym implement. I love, I just recently bought the Rep Fitness FB5000. It's my second bench. So, uh, you know, because I said, you're like, if you can, you want an adjustable bench as your first choice. But since I've got a great adjustable bench, I wanted to add a flat bench. And I gotta tell you, I use that thing a couple days a week easy. And it's, in fact, I use it with a, a plate under the end for a slight incline more than I use my other rep bench and actually just use the regular incline. So I love having a flat bench. I wanted to make sure and, and reference that up front. At the end of this episode, hang on, I'm gonna go ahead and list a bunch of benches that I've gotten great feedback on. Uh, not only the benches that I own here, but also the benches that I know that a lot of people in the comments have really spoken highly of. People that I've helped build gyms have spoken highly of. Some reviews recently that have come out from people that I trust that have been really glowing reviews of certain benches. So I'll get you a list of things to pick from when we get to the end of the episode, but let's go through how I got to that list and what things that all those benches have in common that you should look for too if you decide either not to buy one of those benches or you know, you're out looking around and wondering what should I look for in a good weight bench. And I want to start with there's kind of the big three that I look at. I was trying to think when I wrote the outline for this episode of which of these was most important. And honestly, I don't think that there's any one that's more important than the other one because if you're missing any of these three things, in my opinion, it's a bench you should skip, right? So these are the big three in no particular order. The first one is padding. You want a good amount of padding. And you know, I've got some less expensive benches here in the gym. And when I did the unboxings, in fact, I have an unboxing for the major fitness bench coming out pretty soon, where I actually say, hey, the padding's pretty good. So just if you watch this episode and that, keep in mind that, hey, the padding's not very good. So <laughs> it felt good out of the box, but just from sitting on it a little bit, it's already got some indents where I sit on it. It's got an indent at the top where people's heads go. Like my head weighs a lot. It's pretty big, but it shouldn't weigh enough to dent the padding permanently on a bench. So you want a good amount of thick padding and you want it to be fairly firm, especially out of the box. Anything that's real soft out of the box, it's just not going to last. So a good amount of padding. You want, number two, you want good grippy vinyl around the padding. That's another thing that major bench doesn't have. The RitFit bench that I have in here doesn't have. Pretty much any bench that, buys, that you buy on Amazon, and I'm going to you know, you're gonna hear me drive this point home episode after episode after episode. Once I get done with all the things you wanna look for in a good bench, this is going to eliminate pretty much any bench that you can only buy on Amazon. It's gonna eliminate all the McColos, it's gonna eliminate all the major fitnesses and the Rip Fits and all of these benches. And a primary reason isn't the third thing we'll talk about, it's the first two. Most of these inexpensive benches, where they go inexpensive is in the padding. And when you've got a lot of weight, and you're, let's say you're trying to bench press, and you've just, even if it's not a lot, let's say you've got 225 on the bar, which I take that back, for a lot of people that is a lot. So um, 225 is gonna be enough to where it's gonna really, you're gonna feel that padding shifting around, you're not gonna be balanced, you're gonna have a hard time with the support that that bench provides. And then over time, that padding is just gonna degrade and you're gonna be really unhappy with it. And like I mentioned on that Rogue bench where I called for replacements, you're gonna end up spending as much on a replacement pad as you would have just, to just bought a nicer bench to start off with. What you're looking for on the vinyl, you're looking at a couple things on the vinyl. Number one, you're looking for a nice grippy vinyl. Now there was a time when no bench, Rep Fitness, Rogue, no matter who it was, that vinyl was not grippy at all. They used to really sell a lot of these things called bench wraps, which are additional pieces that you would put over the, over the bench itself. I used to use a big piece of drawer line. In fact, I still, it's hanging up around here somewhere. Um, I still use it on that major fitness bench because there's just no grip on it. Uh, there's, you can also take 
uh, resistance bands and wrap them lengthwise around the bench to add grip. But really there's no reason to have to do that anymore. Most major companies, Rogue Fitness, uh, Rep Fitness, Titan, Bells of Steel, Fringe Sport, you know, all the major players, all those guys have really good vinyl at this point. And in fact, it's so good, they'll typically have their own little cool, you know, they'll call it, we use super grip tape vinyl, or we use uh, clean grip vinyl, or we use extra grip vinyl. You'll see something like that on there. Now, don't trust those terms from these off-brand companies. You see that term on Amazon. Don't trust it. We talked about that last episode. But any major manufacturer is going to have good vinyl. And you know what? Any of those major manufacturers at this point is going to have pretty good padding. So, you know, the good thing about this is if you stick with a major manufacturer, you're going to get those first two things and you're going to have a pretty decently supported pad with vinyl that's nice and grippy and it's going to last a long time. Because the other thing, the problem with these cheap benches and, you know, for a while it was all the rage on the, on the garage gym channels to talk about how great the Amazon Basics bench is. The Amazon's basic bench is not great. It'll get the trick done. I think it's like $25 or $30 or something at the time it came out. Look, it's a $25 or $30 bench, $50 bench, whatever it is. I don't care. I don't look at it anymore. But I tried it. Everybody said, I think one of the reviewers threw it off the back of a truck when they were driving down the street and going, look how strong it is. Um, yeah, just use it for a little bit. That vinyl falls, falls apart. The, vinyl, the padding compresses. It's just not all that great. So regardless of what the descriptions say, stick to a major manufacturer. And as we talked about before, even though some of these guys, you know, I think Bells of Steel and Titan, I believe both sell on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken, buy from the manufacturer directly. There's no reason to make that company pay like 12% of the price of the product to Amazon just for the privilege of selling Amazon when you could go to them directly and just buy it from them and let that 12% go to lower prices, research and development, all that kind of good stuff. So those are the first two of the big three. The third one is you want stability. And we're gonna talk about one of the next features of how you get stability, but you really want a nice stable bench. And believe it or not, both this major fitness and this rip fit and even that Amazon basics bench, the stability is there. I think most you know, home gym companies, even the cheapo ones have figured out stability for the most part. Uh, even Rep Fitness, when they first started, didn't have a great handle on stability. Some of their backs moved around a little bit. But anymore, uh, not, not so much worried about stability. The, one of the next points I'll talk about is kind of a must have for me. And that's one of the things that makes a nice stable bench. But those are the big three. You want a good pad, you want good vinyl around it, and you want a nice stable bench. So all the benches I list at the end of the episode are gonna have those big three for sure. Now let's get into the other stuff, like the secondary characteristics. And the first one that I look for is what's called a three post design. And what that means is at the head of the bench, there's two feet, and some benches, they have this like U-shaped where it's a two foot thing, or they have you know this, the straight down bar that has the straight bar across the top to give you two feet at the top. And then at the bottom of the bench, at the foot of the bench, there is a single post, not two. This is one of the reasons why I don't recommend the Rep Fitness FB 3000 for a flat bench, is it's a four foot design. It's got two feet at the top, two feet at the bottom. Same thing with that Amazon Basics bench. Same thing with a lot of less expensive benches and even some of the higher end benches that I see have this design. Here's why you don't want that. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and sat down at the table and you put your arms on the table and that table starts rocking back and forth? Well, that's because that table has four feet. It's very hard to have four points of contact at exactly the right spots so that it's stable. So what happens on a four foot bench, a lot of times is that you get one that's a little shorter, a little, a little bit you know, less than the rest of them and it starts to wobble around. And while you can put sugar packets under that table at the restaurant, you're not putting sugar packets under your bench. The other reason, and this is really to me, almost as important. When you're bench pressing, the correct form or the proper form for bench pressing is you really want your feet kind of tucked up underneath you and then contacting the floor and then driving forward. And if you've got two feet at the bottom of the bench, guaranteed that's gonna get in the way of proper bench press form. So since you're buying a bench to bench press, you know, the exercise that's named after the implement used for it, you wanna make sure you have a bench that is, that is conducive to the bench press and conducive to the proper setup for the bench press. And that means a single foot at the bottom of the bench. So whenever I'm looking at benches, whenever somebody asks me what I think about a bench, if it has two feet at the bottom, I don't care how good it is otherwise, I don't care how great everybody else says it is, I personally, 
would never buy or recommend a bench with anything but a three post design with that bottom, you know, the foot of the bench having the single post. Now, some benches like the Rep Blackwing or the Rogue Manta Ray, what they do, which is kind of cool, is they have a single post that comes down and then they've got this wider flat piece of metal, a foot that gives that post a broader source for stability. And those are two of the most stable benches you can buy, the Rep uh, Blackwing and the Rogue Manta Ray. Fans of both will get mad at me for saying this. They're basically the same bench. Uh, they're both stupid heavy. They're both hard to move around. The rep's actually harder to move around than the Rogue, so that is one area where I feel like the Rogue's got an advantage. But they're both so heavy. The Rogue is made of seven gauge steel, which is, again, stupid heavy. The, the rep is, I believe, 11 gauge, but it's got a bunch of much thicker steel on it than that. Anyway, their bottom front foot does have a flat plate. I'm not talking about that. That's fine. That works great. I did have to get used to using both of them because my feet did touch that plate, but it didn't affect my setup. Um, personally, I think the benches that I've got now, which just have a single post, were great. But again, we'll talk about which benches I would recommend for those at the end of the episode. The second thing you're going to want to look at, and this is kind of important as far as comfort goes, as far as your body size goes, and that is how on an adjustable bench, this doesn't count on a flat bench, but on an adjustable bench, how does the company deal with the seat gap? And what the seat gap is, is there's a gap between the, the seat pad, the, the pad that your butt goes on, and then the back, which is the part that goes up and down. Well, there's a hinge between those two, and there's some cool benches that have come out now that don't have a hinge there. That's one of the ways they've dealt with it. But what you wanna do is you wanna minimize not only the width of that gap, but you wanna minimize a lot of the benches have the hinge actually tucked into that gap. And if it's not recessed below the bottom of the seat pads, what happens is if you sit down the wrong way, you're gonna sit right on that metal hinge and it's not gonna be a good time. So I've definitely done that more than once on benches that I've been evaluating. It's no bueno, guys. So you wanna make sure that the company has at least looked at it. And there's a couple ways to look at it. The first one is to use what's called the zero gap bench. Now I just mentioned the Rep Blackwing. That's one of its primary features is that it's a zero gap bench. Once you get the bench where you want it adjustment wise, you pull, you unscrew and pull a little pop pin on the seat and it slides back and forth to close that gap. And then you can tighten it back down. For me, I bought that thinking that that was the coolest thing since sliced bread. And it didn't take me very long to get really sick of moving that seat around. Especially if you buy a bench with another way to handle the, the, seat, ga the seat gap, which is to have a back pad that is long enough to act as its own independent flat bench when it's down. So the bench that I have, the bench that I recommend to everybody is the Rep Fitness AB5200 version two. And one of my favorite things about that bench is even as somebody who's super tall like I am, it's back pad when I lay it down, I don't have to worry about the gap. I don't have to put the gap in the small of my back so that the arch of my back doesn't hit it. I don't have to worry about it at all. I just use that back pad as a standalone flat bench. None of my body actually contacts the seat pad. And then another cool thing about that for me is that leaves the seat pad for me to put my feet up on. So sometimes I don't use leg drive. Sometimes to isolate certain muscles, you're gonna to wanna to put your feet up on the bench. And that's a great way to do it is that it's long enough for me to accommodate all of that. So that's another way to accommodate that seat gap is to just have a nice long back pad. The third way that you'll see people do it, and this is what this major fitness does, this is what RitFit does, this is what a lot of your, um, I'm gonna call them Alibaba benches. And something that I haven't talked about here before in the show, and some of you may know, guys may know about this, and some of you may not. There's a company called Alibaba. It's a giant catalog of just about anything you could possibly think of that's all manufactured in China. And as a company, you can go on there and you can go, I want that, put my brand name on it, change the handle to this size, blah, blah, blah. So the, the Alibaba benches all do this particular thing. Another good example is there's a, a company called Jacked Up Fitness. It's like all over the internet right now. You can actually go on to Alibaba and look, and you can see every single one of their all-in-one trainers. They're, Jacked Up Fitness didn't design any of that. They're just buying it from them and then having their branding plastered all over it. But it's the same as you and I could just go to Alibaba and buy a bunch of them. And, but anyway, you guys get the idea. So the way that these Alibaba benches have been working lately is they'll take both of the seat pads and they'll angle down a little bit and then they'll recess the hinge. And then that way when you actually sit back on it, the top part of your butt kind of sinks down kind of the bottom of the lower of your lower back. Uh, the curve of the seat fits the arch of your lower back and you just kind of settle down into the, into the gap. And instead of the gap being something that people are trying to hide or close, they actually make the gap part of the contouring of the bench. 
it's not a bad way to do it. I actually don't mind these. Now, neither one of these benches is tall enough for me. My head hangs off the top no matter what either way, but if you're a little bit shorter than I am, it's not a bad way to handle the gap. Again, it doesn't make up for the padding and the vinyl and the other issues with those benches, but that's the other way you'll see people deal with a gap. My recommendation is either to go with a company that is somehow addressing the size of the gap. Number one, just having a real small gap to start off with. The Rep AB5200 is not a gapless bench, but the gap is tiny, it's like an inch. It's tiny, it doesn't get in the way, um, it doesn't bother you. you, you don't even think about it, and the hinge is recessed nice and low. So they've done a nice job. Other companies, that gap is like two and a half inches. I've seen even seen three inch gaps before. And that's like trying to figure out how to arch your back over the Grand Canyon. So one thing you wanna look at is, do they address it by either making it smaller? Do they address it by doing a zero gap design? I'm blanking on the name of the company, but there's, some, there's a company now that just came out where the hinges are, there is no actually one hinge, there's two hinges and they're kind of moved so that no matter where you move them, the seats are always butted up together. Uh, I wish I could remember. I'll probably think of it by the end of the episode. But So just make sure that they've addressed that seat gap and you don't want a big old hinge there and you don't want a big old gap and you don't want the angled down Alibaba bench style type thing. The next one you're gonna look at is adjustability. Now, a lot of these companies, they'll make a big deal out of, mine's got 14 back adjustments and five seat adjustments. Well, mine's got 15 back adjustments and 12 seat. Honestly, for everybody that I train here in the gym and for myself, I use slight incline, almost 90 degrees, and roughly 45 degrees, and maybe a little bit lower than four. Like, maybe five back adjustments, maybe, probably four, and then the, the seat itself, maybe two. So don't get too caught up, and if you're between two benches and you like one, but it's got one or two less back adjustments, I would say don't worry about it. Now, I'm sure there's gonna be somebody in the comments that goes, well, I'd like to have 15 degrees for my rows and 17 degrees for this, and, and awesome. Dude, if that's how you train, then you wanna get the one with more back adjustments, just in my experience, I don't necessarily see the need for a million back adjustments. So like I said, if it's, if it's the tiebreaker and you like, you know, one better than the other, but it's got the less, just go with the one you like better. I don't think it's a huge thing, but you want to at least have some. Now, how it adjusts is another one. You probably want to go, it seems like the industry standard is what's called a ladder back style adjustment. And that's basically where there's an arm on the seat back, and then there's a bunch of little grooves all the way up the, the bottom of the frame. And as you pull the seat up, the back just kind of clangs in and goes in. And some, the cheap, benches clang, other benches kind of make a nice satisfying thunk, thunk, thunk. That's like adjusting that Rogue and that Blackwing is like that. It's like shutting the car door in a Mercedes Benz. They're just, they're so awesome. They're really well bent, well built benches, almost overbuilt in my opinion. But um, that ladder back style adjustment, better benches are going to have like this, what's called a cage over the top of it so that the, that arm on the back of the seat can't flop around. So that's something that you're gonna to wanna to look at. That's the type of adjustment I would go for. You're seeing a lot of companies now try and get a little fancy with these like sliding tubes and pop pins and just go, simple is better in this situation in my opinion, just go with the ladder back style adjustment. And then also one nice thing about that ladder back with the cage, that typically indicates that you're gonna be able to store your bench vertically. Now vertical storage is something that I didn't think I would use because I'm using most of my garage for my gym, however, I use it all the time because it turns out that when you cram a bunch of equipment in your gym, clear floor space is a premium. And while I don't necessarily use the, the upright vertical storage for storage, I do use it all the time just to get my benches out of the way. If I'm gonna do a floor press, if I'm gonna do a hip thrust, anything that requires you, if I'm gonna do planks for some weird reason, uh, burpees is not, no, I don't do burpees, Never mind. But you get what I'm saying. So having a bench that stores upright, I'm telling you, even if you don't think you need the space for it, it is something that you probably will use. So it's a good idea to look for things that store upright. Again, back to if you go with a major manufacturer, most benches are gonna store upright. But one of the things that will clue you into that is that ladder back style with the cage over the top of it that keeps the arm from flopping around because that arm flopping around is a problem if you're storing it upright. And uh, the benches I have in here, these cheapos, while you can balance them upright, I've seen some people go, oh, you can just, it's not made for upright storage, but you can balance it upright. There's two problems with that. Number one, it's leaning right on the top of the pad. So that cheap vinyl you can imagine is gonna wear out almost right away if you do that. Also, since there isn't anything keeping it from moving, it, they fall and I've definitely had them fall in my gym for exactly that reason. So if it's not made for vertical storage, I wouldn't necessarily recommend storing them that way, but just 
buy one with vertical storage. Speaking of adjustments, should your bench decline? And you, if you go online, you can get mired in all kinds of online arguments. Decline isn't necessary, decline is nice. Um, I like having a slight decline, especially if you're planning on having a cable system. Most low rows these days for home gyms have you sitting on the floor. But if you have a slight decline bench, you can point the head of the bench at the foot plate for the low row, decline it slightly, and then just kind of pull up from that bottom cable position and you won't have to sit on the ground. It's my favorite use for decline. Now I also use decline, a slight decline for some pressing movements. It does give you a mechanical advantage. It's a nice change up for your shoulders if you have bad shoulders. So there's other reasons to have a decline in your bench. Uh, you know, it's nice because some companies like Rep on the AB5200, they give you the option. And you buy it straight, it doesn't decline, but you can buy this little adjustable post and then that allows it to decline so it's an accessory you can buy down the road. And that's a nice thing to have if you're not sure if you like it or not. You can buy it, save, I think it's like a, a 40 or $50 accessory. You can save your 40 or 50 bucks, buy the bench. If you decide you want it to decline, you can do that. The other thing that you can do for a decline, like I said before, is you can take a bumper plate or two and put it under the foot of the bench and you've got a slight decline on your bench. So if you don't want to spend money on it, and again, if you're trying to decide between two benches and one declines and the other one doesn't, and you're trying to figure out if you want that, you can definitely get the one that doesn't decline. And if you decide you want it to, stick those plates under the end of the bench. I can't tell you how often I do that. I'm going to do like an eight year review on my fringe sport bumper plates, and I'll show it in the review all of the indents from the bench feet that had been on there. My 45 pound plates are covered in marks from where I've rested bench feet on them. So it's a normal thing for me. It's a normal thing for a lot of people. You can definitely do that as kind of a hack to not spend money on a decline bench. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is a combination of two features, which is the weight capacity and the steel gauge. Most things these days will say they're a thousand pound capacity. In fact, the ones that I have in here, these cheapos, I think one of them says they have like a 1200 or 1400 pound capacity. Guys, look, nobody's testing this. I think they might be putting at least that on and going, ah, we can put a thousand on it. But really it just sounds good for marketing. I don't know that, you know, is it a thousand static? Where is the thousand sitting? Is anybody going to use a thousand anyway? What's more important to me and I think is much more important to your buying decision is the gauge of steel. The first thing is, is if the bench doesn't tell you what gauge steel it is, it's probably 14 gauge steel. Uh, nobody wants to advertise 14 gauge steel if they can avoid it. You'll also see 14 gauge advertised as industrial rolled gauge steel. It's 14 gauge because what you really want is you want 11 and then at the super high end, you'll see some seven gauge. Seven gauge in my opinion is overkill unless you are buying like a, a competitive powerlifting bench, then you may want it because you're going to need it. But outside of that, for most home gym owners, 11 gauge steel is what you want in your bench. You don't want 14 gauge steel. And I can give you an example on this major fitness bench, which is 14. Just from moving it around the square feet, the edges, the corners of those feet are starting to bend up. So it's just, it's little things like that, right? So, you know, if that's happening this early in it, what's going to happen over time? You know, what's going to happen if I decide to store it on its end and it falls over, you know, is it going to bend where it's not going to be supportive? So just stick with 11 gauge steel. Again, back to your major companies are not going to make benches out of a lower gauge steel than that. In most cases, it's just, it's not the right thing to build a, a base of support out of. And that in one episode, instead of five, like I took for racks, is everything that I look for in a weight bench. And hopefully that gives you some things to look for when you're out looking. Look, there are a million benches that meet all of the criteria that I just listed. So while I'm about to give you a list of ones that I recommend, ones that I've seen other people have really good success with, um, there, there's tons of good benches out there that will meet those criteria. If you can find something from whatever company and it meets that criteria, you're probably in pretty good shape. The big thing for me is just making sure that that vinyl, those big three, right? Those first three, that grippy vinyl and a good pad, that makes all the difference in the world. I've had people come in and train in my gym here who have had, you know, the cheapo benches at home their whole life. And maybe they've got a gym at work that has some cheap benches and boy, right when they get on these benches and they dig in their shoulders for a bench press or they feel the vinyl, just the difference is just so substantial. It's something that's really important to have. So as long as it's got those things, you are probably okay. And I'm going to start off with the benches I have again. And I'll tell you a real quick story because everybody knows people like this. A long time ago, I worked for a couple of guys, well, a guy and his wife who were big gamblers. And he kept asking me and my fiance at the time, you got to go to the track with us. You got to go to the track with us. You got to go to the track with us. And 
They're like, we got, we got a line and everything. We never come home down. We make money every time. For those of you out there who know gamblers, you know people who talk like this. Um, you know, they never lose, right? So one day, and I could not afford this. This is continuing in my theme of stories where Tim is a bad money manager. But so we scraped together a couple hundred dollars. We're like, well, we can afford it, but you got to promise us that, you know, or, you know, or, so we're at the track, right? I think we're at Hawthorne Racetrack in the south side of Chicago. And so we look at the first race and they're like, you should bet this horse and this bet horse and box this Quinella and I'm like, okay, whatever you say. I went up to the, the, the window and spoke Greek to him basically and came back and we put all of our bets down and we came back after the first race and we're like, man, we lost our money. We didn't lose all our money because we bet a little bit, but like, and then here comes Mike and Lori and they're like, yeah, look, you're counting their winnings. And I'm going, wait a minute, you told us to bet on these horses. And we lost, what did, what did you bet on? Like, oh, well, we don't tell people what we bet on. You know, that's bad luck. And I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna punch you right now, Mike. And it was just, so, so the reason I'm telling you that story is the number of Garage Gym reviewers out there who say, hey, I recommend this, this is what you should buy. And then either on their Instagram or their Facebook or you know, on their other Instagram channel where they're working out at home, you see that they're using something completely different than they recommended on their actual channel. And nothing makes me more upset than that. It reminds me of that horse race all the time when I see that. So one of the things that I always commit to both on the Gym Crafter website and I really wanna make sure I get across here is I always wanna start and tell you guys, what did I spend my money on? I am not a big enough channel. I'm not a big enough reviewer to have really any of this stuff for free. At least any of the stuff that I would want is in here for free. Some of this cheapo stuff is free, but I paid for the stuff that I use, I paid for. So I think it's important to say, this is what I bought. This is what I spent my money on. I've kind of already talked about it. I have two benches in here. I have the Rep Fitness FB5000 with a wide fat pad. And I, I made a, a short about this, but I wouldn't buy, I didn't talk about it in the video so far, but I wouldn't buy the wide pad as your only pad. If you're buying a primary bench, just buy the normal narrow pad that these major companies make. Also, speaking of pads, really try and avoid, if you can, the weirdly shaped pads because they're one of those things that are, a lot of things in fitness are designed by engineers because they look like they're a good idea. And then when you get on them, you're like, oh, that person clearly has never used a weight bench because this is a terrible design. And the little narrow back pad, unless you're buying a, uh, a bench just for dumbbells, the one that's wide at the bottom and narrow at the top, typically not the best thing for barbell work, especially if you're lifting very heavy. Anyway, I digress. My FB5000 has the wide pad on it, but that's because it's my second bench. I love that flat bench. It's very sturdy. It's a three post design. It's upright storage is a little wonky. I wish Rep would fix that, but it does store upright. But I do like that, and that's the one that I own. And if you were to ask me, hey, Tim, what flat bench should I buy? It's, a, it's not very expensive. I think it's a great way to go. As far as my adjustable bench, I have the AB5200 version two, and I love that bench. That is, in my opinion, the best bench for garage gym owners. It's the bench that I recommend every time somebody asks me. It's the bench that I own. It's the bench that I spent my money on. It's the bench that I would buy if my house burnt down tonight and I had to restart my gym, I would buy that bench. In line with that, just about any bench that Rep Fitness makes would be a good choice. Now, some people out there are contrarians. I recommend Rep and they're like, oh, that's what everybody has. I want something different. And if you, I'll give you some different recommendations, but if you're not a contrarian, just buy a Rep bench. Go on the website, anything but their FB3000, which is that four foot design. Pretty much every bench they make is solid. They make a bunch of them. Pick one that fits your budget. Pick one that fits your needs. They got a ton of different colors. They've got the best vinyl in the business. It's grippy as all get out. You can actually put your seat on a 45 degree angle and put your phone on it and it just sticks there, which you can't do on a lot of benches. So they're, they're great. I, I, really, I really can't speak highly enough about Rep Fitness Benches. And as big of a company as Rep is now, when they started, they were white labeling a lot of their stuff like we talked about earlier. And the benches were their forte. The benches were what, even their first benches were kind of, modified Alibaba benches, but once they really dug their, their they got their, their hands dirty engineering stuff on their own, man, they built their reputation on benches, they built their company on benches, and that's, for me, that's where most people kind of got into rep fitness, and boy, they've gotten so much better at everything else at this point, and I think I probably extolled their virtues enough, so let's move on to the next one you can pick from, which is Iron Master. Uh, this is a company where I tried out their dumbbells, I didn't like them, I don't like doing math when I'm lifting as, as much as I can avoid it, I try not to do that. And their early benches were, eh, they were okay. At least they were designed by Iron Master. 
Their super bench, right? I think it's called a super bench. Really solid bench, really unique design. Uh, they've got an interesting way on their top end bench of dealing with the gap because the, the pads don't move. The, the seat pad actually sticks into a hole in the flat part. If you look it up, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll put a link to below to everything like this. I'm not affiliated with Iron Master. I don't make anything if you buy an Iron Master bench, but the number of people who have told me they're thrilled with their Iron Master benches uh, is a lot. So I 100% can wholeheartedly recommend Iron Master as well. And I know they're a really good company. They really care about the garage gym community. They've been around for a long time. So you can definitely buy one of those Iron Master benches. And they make some really cool stuff. Gluck's done some Iron Master bench reviews. So if you're curious about them, I haven't owned one myself, but Gluck on his channel has at least two or three reviews of Iron Master benches that I can think of. And that would be a great place to look if you're interested in the Iron Master stuff. Of course, you can't go wrong with Rogue. Rogue made in the USA, overbuilt. Uh, definitely higher in the price category. I know that they're trying to be more price competitive. Rep is just eating their lunch right now. And I know a lot of their new stuff they're bringing out at lower price points. I've seen them start to import a few things here and there. So I think they're getting the picture that, you know, if they're gonna wanna compete volume wise with Rep, that they're gonna have to bring their prices down. But at this point in time, the uh, just to use the man array that I was talking about, I think it's like $500 more than the, than the Rep Blackwing. And it's not $500 better in my opinion, like I said before. Fight me if you want, they're the same bench. Functionally speaking, there's really no difference. One says Rogue, one says Rep. The Rogue, if you wanna, the Rogue looks a little bit cooler. I think it's got a sleeker, kind of more stealthy design, but it ain't $500 better, I'll tell you that much. So um, be careful about both of those. They're very, very heavy. Um, I, I can't impress that upon you enough. If you've got anybody in the house who doesn't want to move heavy things around, I've had a lot of guys buy the Blackwing and then sell it because their wife doesn't want to move the bench around the garage. So just be careful if you buy a bench like that. But all that said, Rogue makes some really good benches. You can't go wrong with a Rogue bench just like you can't go wrong with a rep bench. Believe it or not, Titan Fitness released a new line of benches last year. I've tried all of them and they're they're all not bad. They're really not. Great prices on a, if you're on a budget, you know, Titan used to be, you paid a price to go on the budget route. They're not as cheap as they used to be, but Titan makes some pretty good benches now. They're getting really good reviews. I haven't reviewed one on this channel, but I know that uh, Coop and Garage Gym Reviews has reviewed them. I believe Glock has, I think Basement Brandon has too. Uh, when they first released this new line of benches, I think they sent a bunch out. So there's definitely reviews out there to find, but I tried them all at home GymCon. Great vinyl, good padding, stable, everything you'd want in a bench, good price points. So if you like Titan and you wanna save a few bucks, Titan's a great way to go. And I'm gonna give you some cool ones. If you're the type of person where you're like, I don't want a boring old, regular old adjustable bench, I want something fancy. And even though last episode I talked about the dangers of complexity, there are a couple of benches that add complexity that I think are useful. Uh, and that I've tried, that are really well built, that are really cool. The first one is by Exponent Edge, it's called the Infinity Bench. Also known in some people as the bench that broke the internet because when it released, uh, like everybody and their brother ordered one. Uh, I think it broke the site, took forever to fill orders. The guy who owns the, the company is an awesome guy. I talk to him all the time, uh, met him at Home Gym Con, really creates some, some of my favorite products. Uh, there's a landmine jack here that I use. There's a bunch of stuff of his. I've got his uh, flex wedge coming soon. So love the company and the infinity bench is super cool. It's a convertible, like a half bench. So it's a regular bench and you can flip the top down so that you can use it as like a seal row pad and a place to rest thing for like dumbbell skull crushers. There's just, it's, you can do like preacher curls on it. There's just, there's a ton of stuff. Check it out, exponentedge.com. I'll put a link below the infinity bench. And, and if you take the infinity bench and then you add like a zillion accessories and a, this is probably the most expensive bench that I'll recommend today, even probably more. If you buy all the accessories, it's probably even more than the Rogue Man Array. And that's the new Prime Fitness Shorty Bench. I, I think it's called a Shorty. Gluck just did a review. Go check out Gluck's review. Super cool bench. I think he bought all of the accessories for it or most of the accessories so you can see all of those. It is so cool. Prime Fitness is a great company. It's a little bit higher end company. Everything they make is, I don't know that they call everything commercial quality, but from everything I saw, I would call it commercial quality. Super heavy duty, really cool color options, and just works. Some of the stuff, you know, sometimes you'll see stuff like this and it's you see it work on, on the internet and it doesn't really work. And it's kind of janky when you get it in real life. The Prime Fitness stuff, man, it is slick. It just works and it works easily. It works smoothly. It's really well engineered. And another company that 
that really cares about the people that use their products, the people that run the company Lyft. You can tell that it's designed by people who actually train. So that would be the last recommendation that I'll leave you with. So hopefully, after all of that, after 35, 40 minutes of me talking about benches, hopefully you guys have a good idea of what kind of bench to go buy, what to look for in a bench, and let me know what you guys think. What did I miss? Is there a feature on a bench that I didn't mention? What brand bench do you have that I didn't mention that you would recommend that hits all of those characteristics? Like I said, I know there's a million of them out there. It's hard to keep up anymore. You know, over the last five years, the home gym industry has exploded, and it used to be where there were just a few companies making stuff. Now there's, seems like there's a new company every day. So. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you recommend down below. All as usual, make a pinned comment. And that's all I've got for now. If you made it this far and you haven't hit the like button yet, make sure you hit that like button. If you made it this far and you can't hit that like button, leave me a comment as to why you would watch a 40 minute video and not like it. And other than that, until the next episode, which is gonna be kind of different, I'm Tim with Gym Crafter.